All right, Akim. Shalom, Shalom. It's the brother Yahweh Shapat coming at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Wahawa Kakwadash. Double honors to my elders and apostles at Great Millstone who do teach and rule well in these scriptures. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. To the brothers that's on the highways and the byways, pushing his word out in truth and sincerity, risking your lives and your freedom to do so. To you, I say Shalom. To you, few Akim and Akwathiam. Which that is uh, Akim being brethren and uh, Akwathian being sisters in Hebrew. Shalom to you all. To those of you all who subscribe to this truth. You know, um, it's going to be another quick, quick lesson, man. You know, Lord willing, it's edifying. This is an article from Fox News and it says Super Pink Moon, NASA's top tips for April sky watchers. You know, and um, I believe this, this super moon is uh supposed to appear on April the 7th at about 10:35 p.m. Eastern time, I believe that's what that says. So, you know, this is just another sign of the times that we're in because the heavenly father set up the moon as a declaration of the times. You know, and uh, I'll get a scripture for that. You know, this this is just another part of prophecy that's playing out, you know. And it's a beautiful thing because uh, hey, the Heavenly Father is constantly reassuring his elect, his hopeful elect, you know, that everything that he spoke of, even from the beginning, is coming to pass now, man. The prophecy is speaking. You know, this is um, Ecclesiasticus um, 46... And uh, Salaki, not 46. Satan, man, with these goddamn YouTube videos. Salaki, I can. Ecclesiastes 43 and 6. Con. So this is Ecclesiastes 43 and 6. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. Sign of the world, meaning a, a sign of, of, of the end of the world, man. You know what I'm saying? Esau's world, not the whole world, you know. So uh, I got another scripture I want to get proving that. This is Genesis 1. The Heavenly Father set the, the moon up as, as a sign, you know, as a sign, you know, uh, uh, to appear before the day of his coming. You know, pursuant to that scripture in Joel, which I'll go there next. But the Heavenly Father set up the, the, the sun. And, I mean, well, he set up the sun and the moon. Most uh, For the most part, the moon, though, you know, for a sign. This is Genesis 1 and 14. And the powers said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. You know. So both the sun and the moon can be used for uh, signs. You know what I'm saying? Because um, it speaks about that in Joel and in other uh, scriptures. I have a couple of precepts I want to bring up. You know, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying to you, brothers, man. This is Joel 2. And um, I'll start at verse 30. And it says, and I will shoot wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. I believe those pillar, pillars of smoke are the uh, volcanoes, you know. It was it was a couple of volcano eruptions last year, and I'm not sure if it was some this year. But, um, yeah, man, the Heavenly Father has been making all of these things come to pass, especially here lately in the last year or so. It says the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood, you know. It says uh, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come so this is a sign of the heavenly father's return this is a sign that his return is nigh. like i said you know i'm gonna pull the article back up this is a super pink moon and that moon looks like a, that's a blood moon man you know so um i got uh, other scriptures that i want to bring out these prophecies are, are speaking man they are they they come to pass quickly this is Revelation 6 and uh, 12. And I beheld, 
when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. You know, so you got a lot of these celebrities dying. These Israelite celebrities, you know, more in particular, that's what this scripture here, um, Revelation 6 and 13 is speaking of. The stars of heaven, man. You know, and I'm just breaking this down the same way I've heard, you know, the apostles and other break, other brothers break it down. You know, if I was wrong on the breakdown, you know, hey, Lord willing, the brother put, I mean, the, the heavenly father put uh, the spirit on the brother to, you know, correct me. But, um, you know, I, hey, I'm just breaking it down the way I was, uh, I was taught, man. You know, this is Revelation 6 and 12, though, again. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. So the heavenly father, like it just said in Genesis 1 and 14, let the sun and the moon be uh, used as a sign. The heavenly father is going to give signs in the sun and the moon, man, you know. And he's doing that as we speak, doing that right now. You know what I'm saying? This is uh, I'm going to get a uh, Luke. The 21st verse and the 25th, I mean, the 21st chapter and the 25th verse. This is Luke chapter 21 and verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations and perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Yeah, man. So these are hey, that pink, that super pink moon. That's a sign being shown in the moon, man. You know, um, I believe I can, I believe that's, you know, that's, that's all I had on this man, but just, it's just another declaration of the times that we're in, man. You know, Yahweh Shah is getting ready to make his return. You know, so, um, got one more scripture that I want to bring up. You know, I love to bring this one out, man. You know, this is a second edge. It's the ninth chapter. And uh, it says, uh, I'm going to start the verse, the first verse. It says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Yeah, man. So I'm going to skip down. It says, um, for like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and end and the end is manifest through what? Through these signs, you know, it says in the earth and in the, in the heavens, it says, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful of, and powerful works and endings in effects and signs. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils and see my shall and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So you know, this is all about the elect, man. You know, only the elect are going to make it through all of these said perils. You know, and, and and like I was like the, I was getting this, this this scripture down here, second as is nine and six to prove a point. These are the um the wonders and powerful works that that super pink moon. That's just one of those wonders and powerful works. You know that the heavenly Father is is, is showing us, man. These signs of the end, signs of the times that we're in. So that was all I had. I can you know I'm gonna close it out with that. And uh, Lord, Lord, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying to you, brothers, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. All praises, honor, and glory is due to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah for putting the spirit on me to do this lesson. And until next time, I say Shalom.